uh, mid-September, you were at a meeting in Johannesburg with African agriculture ministers who took a clear stand on climate smart agriculture ahead of COP17 in South Africa. What made the ministerial meeting there so important? Well, thanks, Pascal. I think what made that meeting so important is really a, a really uh, clear consensus and a strong communique that came out of that meeting, which is called the Johannesburg Communique, in which the ministers of agriculture were really focused on the importance of climate smart agriculture, encouraging investment in climate smart agriculture, and even taking uh, that conversation one step further and calling for something that many of us have been working for for a long time, calling for an agriculture work program to come out of the COP, an agriculture work program that covers both adaptation and mitigation. This is really quite quite a big step forward. You know, there's been a lot of conversation around these issues, um, but for um, a large group of agriculture ministers, African agriculture ministers, to come out with this communique is actually a, quite a strong statement. And this is very much led by South Africa. Uh, it's something that they really want on the agenda at the COP. They talk about COP17 as an African COP, and they think that it's critical that agriculture be part of that conversation, part of the broader conversation around, uh, around climate change. So I think this is great, and I think it's also really important because you know these are issues that, that many of us in the platform have been working on for a while. The materials for that conference, maybe I can show you if I'm allowed, include a brochure that was produced um, by ourselves together with FAO and IFAD, and it uses examples from FAO, IFAD, and, and World Food Program. So you know this is really uh, a lot of the partners within the platform worked on this, and we also produced a policy brief which has key messages on what's critical about what we call opportunities and challenges for climate smart ag in Africa. This brief um, was also produced by a number of partners within the platform, uh, plus CCAT, the uh, uh, CGIR research program on climate change, agriculture and food security. So Bruce Campbell from, from CCAT put a lot of work into this. So we did a lot of preparation. Those documents were received really well by the ministers. Um, and they've, they've done a great job of taking it forward and they've produced what's called, it's actually called the Johannesburg Communique, uh, which really lays out what the ministers think should happen in relation to agriculture. And just briefly, what, you know, their interest in this is that it, it really comes from the food security perspective. So what, what climate smart agriculture is, is about increasing productivity, resilience, and carbon sequestration. And, and Africa, the African ministers were very much coming at this agenda from the position of we must improve food security in Africa and we must do it in a way that's sensitive to the changing climate. So climate smart agriculture was an issue they responded to very well. Okay, thanks. Obviously we will post all these uh, mentioned documents next to uh, the video online so people can download it. Let's just move ahead a little bit more towards Wageningen, end of it. This month, October, there will be the Global Science Conference on Climate Smart Agriculture in Wageningen, which puts a focus on multidisciplinary science. And what makes this gathering important on the way to Durban? I think that the Wageningen Conference is, is um, another of these series of events that leads to Durban and, in fact, beyond Durban. You know, I think. Uh, those of us who are working on this issue of climate smart agriculture are also wanting to stress that the issue goes beyond Durban. You know, if there is, if the parties decide to establish a work program on agriculture, that's great. But climate smart agriculture matters anyway, despite what happens at the negotiations, um, despite that particular conversation, increased investment in climate smart agriculture is critical. So um, the work of the bargaining and conference is is really to bring together some of the best scientists who are working on these issues at the moment um, and bring scientists together to, to identify where we are in terms of the current science uh, on climate smart ag, what we, what we know in terms of the relationship between agriculture and greenhouse gases, what we know about carbon sequestration, particularly soil carbon and, and other carbon sequestration around agriculture. You know, how can agriculture, recognizing that agriculture is a contributor to greenhouse gases, how can we ensure that agriculture can also be part of the solution. So that conference in bargaining is, is, is the intention is really to bring some of the best minds who are working on this together and have scientists tell, uh, 
encourage scientists to, to, to come up with a clear statement that they would like uh, policy makers, decision makers to hear about the importance of, of the science of climate smart agriculture, the science of agriculture and greenhouse gases. What do policy makers need to know about where they should be investing, what they should be, what should be the priorities in terms of investing in science. So the, the bargaining conference, hopefully the conclusions of that will lead into Durban and then beyond Durban into Rio Plus 20. We hope this is a part of a continuing conversation. And again, I should stress that you know the beginnings of this conversation really started with the platform. The platform's work on climate smart agriculture, on agriculture and climate change in Copenhagen, in Cancun, have helped generate some of these global conversations. So I think the platform should be very proud of the role that it's played uh, in this whole area. And perhaps I could just mention briefly, Pascal, you know, one of the highlights of the Johannesburg conference was really the presentation by John Beddington, who is heading this Commission on Agriculture and Food Security uh, and Climate Change. And that again was you know, a report, a commission that had its genesis in the work of the platform. Um, so John will be, um, I, I understand, launching that commission or the, the conclusions of that commission uh, in November uh, and then continuing uh, conversations at Durban. But, uh, you know, I think, I think, again, the platform should be proud of some of this work that it's done in, in, uh, in raising this issue on, on, on a global agenda. Okay, thanks so much. Um, the World Bank is also launching on December 7 a investment platform on climate smart agriculture. Can you tell us a bit more about how this uh, is developing right now? Again, and it's, and it's the World Bank, it's, it's a high level meeting, it's the World Bank together with the African Union Commission and the government of South Africa are hosting this event on December 7 uh, in, in Durban. And again, this is the result of a of a, a broad partnership of a number of organizations coming together. Um, I've just lost the picture, Pascal. Can you still see me? I can still see you, yes. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay, sorry. I'll, I'll start that again. So the, the December 7th meeting is, again, the result of a number of agencies coming together uh, to find different ways to support climate smart agriculture. And what the intention of that investment platform is, is to try to drive um, uh, investment to the climate smart components of existing national agriculture strategies. So uh, FAO is closely involved, IFAD is involved, and, and we have been. And it's really an attempt to try, to, again, to highlight the importance of climate smart agriculture strategies and to help donors who are looking for ways to invest in this area by helping them identify where there are agriculture strategies that are climate smart, how they can uh, provide additional support to those strategies. And, and also part of the platform will be bringing a, a knowledge exchange and information component so that where there are countries who have agriculture, national agriculture strategies, particularly in Africa, among the CADAP uh, strategies, where there are countries that would uh, uh, benefit from additional expertise and try to strengthen the climate smart components of those strategies, and we're, we're seeking to encourage them to support the provision of information and exchange, uh, information and knowledge to, to strengthen those strategies. So providing additional knowledge to strengthen the strategies and, and ideally to provide additional donor support to those strategies so that countries can better implement their own national programs. Yeah, let finally speak about Durban in itself though. What are, what are your expectations for Durban in terms of Agriculture Day, maybe and COP17, the negotiations? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert on, on what might come out of Durban. I think my feeling is that um, those, those negotiations are incredibly difficult. There's a very complex uh, set of actors involved in those political discussions. I feel like um, from our side, what's really critical is that we can keep coming up with constructive ideas, constructive action on the ground so that almost regardless of what happens in that kind of broad political level, we can still support action on the ground to support, uh, to strengthen agriculture, to ensure that agriculture can be both more productive, to ensure that agriculture can be helping farmers become more resilient and to help African farmers in particular, look at ways in which they can strengthen carbon sequestration um, in, in their farming techniques. So 
Our focus is, is really action on the ground. It would be wonderful, wonderful if, if there is a successful outcome in Durban. We really hope that's the case. Um, and the large number of people working to, to make that happen, a huge, huge energy uh, working with, with the negotiators, with countries, helping them strengthen positions there. Um, but I think, you know, quite separate from that international process, there's a great deal that can happen on the ground to simply encourage smart investment in agriculture. As we know, everything is about it, um, trying to limit your expectations, but what would be a positive outcome? Well, you know, at, at one, of the, one of the platform's first hosted meetings, I think it was Lindy with Sabanda, who had that great button that we all had, which was no agriculture, no deal. Mm. Um, I'm not sure that uh, everybody would say no agriculture, no deal, but I think what we would really, uh, what, what would be success, uh, out of Durban would be an agriculture work program that covers both adaptation and mitigation, recognition that we really do need to do the work around agriculture to find out how agriculture can be more and more part of the solution to climate change. 